As many of you may know, I live in Australia which currently doesn't have the greatest internet in the world. This is mostly due to the NBN, Australia's national broadband network. NBN was originally supposed to have FTTP fiber to the premises throughout 90% of Australian homes. Unfortunately, things changed and Australia now uses a mix of different connection types. Less than half of Australia actually ended up with fiber to the premises, leaving most people with either fiber to the node or fiber to the curb. Some ISPs also only offer the full speed of NBN through FTTP, limiting customers to a maximum of only 50 megabits under perfect conditions. Thankfully though, I don't have to deal with NBN. Where I live, a private fiber company operates a fiber to the premises network separate to the NBN. This network was installed way back before 2010 with 100 megabit internet plans available over a decade ago. For security reasons, I'm not going to reveal the company that owns the network. Anyway, let me show you how it works. So this is where it all starts. This is the optical network termination device installed on the side of my house. This box simply converts the fiber optic cable into ethernet which then runs to the router indoors. It's possible to get multiple different services through the same box, including things like pay TV and VoIP services. There's also four separate ethernet ports which can each support an independent internet connection. It's even possible to get gigabit internet here, although it is currently ridiculously expensive and only available from specific ISPs. 10 gigabit is also theoretically supported as well, but an upgraded ONT would be required for that. This is where the other end of that ethernet cable goes to. It simply terminates to a wall plate in the center of the house where the router goes. You may notice that there are two ethernet jacks here. Coming out of that ethernet port is a Cat5V cable which runs into the WAN port of my Ubiquiti Edge Router X. This is a business grade router with lots of features although it is very complicated to use. From the Edge Router X, an ethernet cable goes into the ASUS RT-AC86U. This is what I use as an access point. Originally I did have it set up as a router but it did not do a very good job so it's now running as an access point and it's working fine. The access point also powers the Raspberry Pi via two USB ports, including the Ethernet adapter so that you don't have to use wireless Raspberry Pi. And uh, this Raspberry Pi is running Pi-hole, and that's basically a DNS server that does ad blocking and lots of uh, and lots of uh, cool DNS features such as DNS caching to speed up your network. The other cable from the Edge Router X goes into that wall plate down the bottom, and I actually ended up installing that wall plate. I added a second Cat6 cable. And this runs into the other room where my actual setup is. So I have a completely wide connection for everything. Let me show you that. So this is in my room now, just behind the UPS I'm using. You can see that there is a wall plate there with a Cat6 jack and a uh, TV, TV jack as well. And that's where the other end of that Cat6 cable goes to. And it runs behind this cabinet and through the closet in the wall and all the way over to the setup. You can just see it over here. It also goes with a few other cables because there's only power points on that side of the room so I have to run power cables as well. So yeah, the cables make their way up into the top of the desk where the cable management is. It's a little sloppy at the moment. Some of my adhesive um, stuff has fallen off but yeah, you get the point. So up here is a network switch. This is a gigabit 5 port switch and that's where all my devices plug directly into. And it does its job. Like I've had no issues with the switch. It it works fine, you can get gigabit speed between all the devices locally, and it does its job. You can see I'm using four Cat6 cables and one Cat5V cable for the Nintendo Switch, because that one is only 100 megabit anyway. And one of these cables goes to the server in the cupboard, and this runs things like Plex as well as some other media things throughout my house. I pay for a connection with 100 megabits on the download and 40 megabits on the upload. It is currently 7.52 p.m. on a Tuesday and the network is a little congested, which is why I'm not getting the full speeds. But at pretty much any other time of the day, you will expect the full 100 to get through. But I just want to quickly demonstrate one of the reasons I bought the Edge Router X. So you see I'm getting my full speeds here pretty much about 5-10% off. No issues. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to start a Steam download on the PC here. I've got a, a ping meter running on Fortnite because it seems to be the most accurate and best way to show this test and how it works. You see that was getting perfect ping and on the switch on Wi-Fi it was getting perfect ping. 
but as I've just started the download, you will see that these uh, red dots have started appearing. There you go. And the ping has skyrocketed. So this is pretty common on consumer routers. When someone starts to download any type of game or like any task at all, just becomes impossible while someone else is downloading. So if I perform a speed test now, while we're still having issues, we should see a significantly reduced download and upload speed right there. Download of three megabits, four megabits. And you see, yeah, it's it's not like one device is really clogging up the uh, the network here, slowing things down. Yeah, even the upload, the upstream is suffering heavily right there. And we're not even doing any uploading at all. And that's what we got. 16 millisecond ping, jitter of 251 millisecond and 26% packet loss. These results are so much worse. So now, this is what the ping's sitting at. It's just gone up to about 30. But if we're obviously with a heavier download at a better time of day when it could fully utilize the speed of the network, it would be much worse. So here's where the magic comes in. The Edge Router X UI right here, which is what I have open. It has a feature called Smart Queue Management. So if I go ahead and put in my uh, my download speed, 100 megabits, and my upload is 40, and I apply these settings. So there we go. The configuration has been applied successfully. And our pings drop back down to 20, 27. It was below 15 a second ago. Yeah, the same there on the switch. We've got no issues. It's really blurry, hard to focus on that, but you see what I mean. And here we go, doing a speed test while uh, downloading on Steam. You can see right there, we're still downloading. It's not paused at all. Ping is still good on both devices. The speed test just finished and those are the results we got. The upload is fine and the download is perfectly usable. So instead of just slowing down every device on the network, what the uh, QoS does is it distributes the bandwidth evenly. So each device gets a fair amount and it doesn't cause any lag at all. You can also see right now that there is supposed to be a ad right here. But the Raspberry Pi I showed you earlier is currently blocking this ad from loading. So there's no ads to see, which is pretty cool. We can see here in real time that the Pi hole is blocking ads correctly. We got 18,153 queries blocked today. 12.7% of all traffic has been blocked and 84,000 domains on the block list. You get a lot of cool little, uh, little graphs here. You can see the top blocked domains and the top permitted domains. It's pretty cool. We go to the query log, we can actually see in real time that Google Ads and uh, Microsoft Ads, uh, a bunch of things for apps like mobile apps, they're all being prevented from loading. And only things that are important like Google.com like and, and Samsung.com, like actual websites, manage to get through. So yeah, that's my setup and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Sure, it's not as good as a lot of places in the world, but... According to speed tests, it's faster than 99% of Australia, which is good enough for me. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned a thing or two. Uh, please subscribe if you're interested in more videos like this. Otherwise, that's it. See you in the next one.